You know any better? He died so that we could have our sins remiss. Amen? Oh, we don't sound like a grateful people in the house. How many are thankful that Christ died? Had he not died, our sins would not be remiss. And so we are truly honored and thankful to God today because we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? What is the gospel? The gospel is the birth. Then it's the life. Then it's the death. Then it's the resurrection, and now it's the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today is Good Friday. How many are glad that there is a Good Friday? Because if there was no Good Friday, there would be no Easter resurrection Sunday morning. And I don't know about you, but when he got up, we got up with all power in our hands because greater is he that be within us than he that is in the world. Give the Lord one more hand praise. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be the glory. Let's pray in. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come together collectively and we say thank you. God, we say thank you. God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for dying on the cross for our sins. Father God, you thought about us because you know us and you love your children. And what place of love that you would show us through dying on the cross for us, Father God. We say thank you. Now, Father God, move by the power of your Holy Spirit in this service today, Father God. We take this opportunity to offer you a sacrifice of praise to come and learn of you, Father God, through your word and the seven last sayings of you, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, move by the power of your Spirit. Have thine own way in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So be it. Let's clap our hands for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, don't clap your hands for yourself. Don't clap your hands for me. But this is for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, let's raise up the praise in the house. Come on, we are the city of praise who understand the power of praise. Somebody is just one hallelujah away from a breakthrough. Come on, lift the praise up in the house because God is truly worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is Good Friday. Hallelujah. So we thank God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Let us welcome our very own Elder Bessie Ashworth as she comes forward. Let's give her a hand in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. I don't know if you're all excited, but I am. And we should be excited because this day is a very special day. And to the speakers, my God. God knows your name. Amen. You need to clap right there because he could have chosen anybody, but he chose you. Hey, come on now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. I'm good with this one. Okay. That's my son. He makes sure his mother is taking good care of clap on your feet. Believe it or not, that's one of the words. Father, I give you praise, I give you glory. I thank you for our bishop and pastor. They never forget this particular day is special. And as they realize it's special, we do too. So we thank you for how you're going to go about it. It's not about us. It's all about you. And each one of the speakers realize that they're performing for an audience of one. And that's you. So we're going to go forth in this because, God, you got a message. Everybody that's sitting here today will never be the same when they leave out after they hear these seven last words that Jesus spoke on the cross. So that's the time to clap right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> So everybody that's in here, take a deep breath, breathe in, and breathe it out. That's your moment, what you're doing with it. That's your moment, what you're doing with it. Think about it. That's your moment, what you're doing with it. 
as I was, God is so full of humor. As I was driving over here and I'm going, okay, God, I'm doing this. It's been a while since I got up here to do it. I said, Chairman gave me my little instructions. I said, but God, what do you want me to do? And this is what the title for today is. A trip down memory lane. <laughs> a trip down memory lane. So our seven speakers is going to take us down memory lane. My God, my God. And we're going to start with our first. We're going to do one, two, three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So our first speaker will be D.I.T. Troy Holmes. And his word is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let's take us down memory lane. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, city. So, seven last words I'll be speaking on. Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This has to be the greatest act of forgiveness, obedience, compassion, part of prophecy fulfillment in world history. The ability to forgive someone who has hurt you can be very difficult thing to do, but let this be an example. Mm. Matthew 27, 26, Jesus was beaten, scourged, tortured, whipped, his flesh torn, his clothes torn from his body, a crown of thorns placed on his head, mocked, hail, king of Jews. Father, forgive them. But who is Jesus referring to? When he speaks of them, is it the disciples mentioned in Matthew who said, Jesus will be there with you all the time, but they all fled. Could it be Peter, the one who stood beside him and said, I'll be there for you, but he denied Jesus three times, not just once. Was he referring to Judas who betrayed him for a few coins? What was Jesus speaking of? You and I. Jesus died, he was placed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. The forgiveness <clears throat> that we are shown, but we do not even understand how deeply we are offending him. So what does this mean for us present day? There is someone that we may need to forgive today. Is it a family member? friend, co-worker, or could it have been an individual in a store just recently? Excuse me, ma'am, are you in line? And they respond, does it look like I'm in line? You have to forgive them. <clears throat> may need to forgive yourself. And forgive me in advance, because when I get nervous, I need to laugh. <laughs> so I may be speaking to someone right now I need you to go in your kitchen. Go to that little box on your countertop, the one you put the soft bread in and it comes out crispy. I need you to pick that up. I need you to shake it. If it sounds like a pair of maracas, you may need to clean your toaster. So I need you to forgive yourself for taking advantage of, or, or, or take it for granted your toaster. I forgive the wall this morning as they caught my pinky toe as I turned the corner. Or you may need to forgive an individual who took the life of a loved one. I speak about that today. That is part of my story as of last Thursday. Young man, we forgive you. Because if I can't forgive you, we can't forgive you, God cannot forgive us. I'm going to be brief. Forgiveness does not mean atonement or reconciliation at the moment or reconnecting with that person. 
Forgiveness means you're getting rid of the bitterness, rage, frustration, and anger, all the things that can eventually consume you. Forgiveness does not mean it will not hurt or the pain will be removed. Forgiveness is a true act and walk of faith. We have to trust that God has a plan for that individual that mistreated us. It is not time for vengeance. We have to believe God can handle anything in any circumstance much better than we can ever imagine. Can we truly say our issue of unforgiveness is greater than what Jesus paid at the cross for us? It's better to give them. It's better to give than receive. So what someone has done to us should not be greater than what God has did for us. You only become stuck when you stop. So in closing, I say, do not stop forgiving. Amen. Amen. What's happening? These are distractions. Because the enemy is upset with you because you press your way out. So he'll use anything to distract you from hearing God's voice. But we thank God for DIT Troy Holmes. And he the main words he left, he said, keep forgiving. And if nothing stay within you, keep forgiving because God always forgives us. And remember, we're walking down what? Just want to know if y'all paying attention. Just want to know if you're paying attention. I'm gonna say, Bishop, Pastor, they were sitting here. Now, whether they was paying attention, I don't know, but quiz them when you get back. Okay, let's move on to our next speaker. I didn't remind you all, you have at least seven minutes, okay? Seven is the divine number for completion, okay? Amen. Okay, let's continue down memory lane. Our second speaker, truly I say unto you today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Youth Ambassador, Maya Hawkins. Praise the Lord, City. Praise the Lord. My scripture comes from Luke 23, 43. Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. So in the past, I've always thought this scripture was simple and to the point, okay? You learned about it when you were growing up. Um, Jesus died on a cross for your sins so you can be with him in heaven. So I have met some of the most strongest, resilient, greatest pre preachers and teachers other than Bishop Joel and Pastor Yolanda Peebles on this side of heaven. They are my fifth graders at Imagine Foundations at Morningside. <laughs> um, they have really changed my perspective of what the scripture means and especially when it came to the meaning of the word paradise. Um, so let me tell you a story that made me change my perspective. On November 2nd, 2023, I lost one of my scholars to an unknown illness. My heart was completely shattered and it was broken. I was hurt, I was angry, I felt great pain. And me and my teammate, we had to figure out how to tell 35 kids that they no longer had their best friend. That's one of the hardest jobs I've ever had to do and I did not know I was signing up for that when I became a teacher. So the next school day, emotions were high, and just like any other parent, when my kids cry, I cry. One of my scholars came to me though. He said, "Miss Hawkins, why are you crying? I had to look at him like he was crazy because I did not think he was in the same room I was in at the moment. So I allowed him to speak. I said, okay, I wanna hear you out. 
Um, he said, why are you crying? He completed his assignment on earth. He lived a life that was pleasing to God and made God happy. He believed in God and all the works he has done. And my pastor told me, that's how you get to, it's a word, it starts with a P. I think it's paradise. And so now his reward is that he was gonna be in heaven. So I'm going to ask you again, Ms. Hawkins, why are you crying? After hearing that, we decided to have a class discussion on what it really means because we all have lost our best friend and we just needed clarity from each other. So we began to recount our memories with Naeem and we decided to talk about how we treated him and how we, how he supported us. And some of the scholars realized that they weren't the kindest people. They weren't the best versions of themselves. And that's when another scholar came out and said, um, so Jesus died on the cross and forgave all of us of everything we've done. So he still loves us and he still accepts us even when we have done wrong. So let me tell you about this word paradise. The definition of paradise is a place or condition of great happiness and peace where everything is exactly as you would like it to be. According to my kids, going to a trampoline park or a beach in Florida or even seeing their favorite teacher outside of school hours is paradise. To others, it's sitting by bodies of water and mountaintops just to reflect. But all of that is what we envision paradise to be on this side of heaven. According to the Bible, paradise is, it consists of gates made of pearls, cities and streets made of gold, pure gold. The foundation is made up of different precious stones and it's where everything is crystal clear and God's glory illuminates all over it. Paradise is a place that is full of peace, love and joy. Knowing all of these things, we were able to be at peace. And I hope someone else finds peace thinking about paradise as well. If you ever fear or worry about what happens after this life, remember that as long as you are a believer, your reward at the end of all of this is paradise. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, youth ambassador. That's one of my spiritual daughters. Hallelujah. I'm like grandma too. And God is so good. You look at who he has chosen today and they're coming in their own way. And that's what's so important. They come in, in their own way, how these words mean so much to them. And as Ma left with us, she said, remember in paradise is peace. And that's what we want is peace. So give her another clap, hallelujah. Huh? Okay, we moving on down where? I'm just trying to sit you still with me. Okay, we moving on down memory lane. I like that. That's what God say. Bring them back. Let them know we taking a trip down memory lane. My God. Okay, third word. Let me calm down, Elder. <laughs> Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. MIT Tamara Wilson, give her a hand. Let's receive her. <laughs> As she continued taking us down memory lane. All right, good afternoon, city. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I'm excited to be here. I'm a little nervous, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you, Lord God, for bringing me here today and changing and leading my life. Uh, special thank you to our Bishop Joe Peebles and Pastor Yolanda Peebles. They are here, but their beautiful children are here too. So thank you, Peebles and Trent <laughs> family for representing the family. And then, um, my family, my husband, and my children, and my mother-in-love. 
And he reminded me every day that this day was going to come. So I love you, babe. Thank you for the reminders. Okay, so now let's get into this third word that Jesus spoke while he was on the cross. So if you can join me, it was John 19, verses 26, 27. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. And with that, when I first read it, I said, hmm, you know, you hear it over and over again, it's in remembrance. And I ended up reading the whole book of John. So I couldn't just read one verse, one chapter, it got good. And yes, it did. <laughs> so behold that son, I initially thought of my husband and he is a caretaker for his mother and he's the only living child here. And just um, the way that he loves her, he cares for her. And if something was to happen to him, you know, who would take care of her? And that had the revelation, that would be me. And not, not because I'm his wife, not because, um, you know, it's because of the love and the relationship that I have with Jesus Christ and how I was raised and what was instilled in me as a child and was still in me now. And to know that, um, that, the, the <laughs> get this camera in my face. <laughs> to know that um, Jesus was on the cross and that he was in so much pain and what did he think about? What was he trying to tell us? You know, he charged us all with a calling and to fix a relationship, to find that person um, who knows who it may be, but he was in pain and he was talking, woman, behold that son. And I'm sure she was like, what, what's going on? And, you know, Mary was like, you know, <laughs> and then he speaks of um, his beloved one. The scripture reference was uh, John, uh, 13, verse 23, uh, where he is speaking of John. And I'm like, well, why did he? Why is John the beloved? Why is he the one that's going to be there to help take care of his mother? You know, he knew what was going to happen, but John, they had a great relationship. He could trust John. John was there for him. And so my husband trusts me. He knows I'm there for him. And I would definitely take care of his mother. And so my question for you today, um, you know, why did Jesus ask him to do that? And because they had that trust and relationship, which I referenced Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. And there's a second point that I wanted to take from this. There's so many ways this could have went um, if it was coming from the words of Jesus, the words of John, Mary. Uh, beholding that son and having that relationship. I, um, I have a family member who recently had a stroke in which she um, has a wonderful relationship with God. She is a minister and she had early interaction where it left her. She was completely independent and she has right side weakness now. She's in a wheelchair. But to God be the glory, she has faith in still doing God's good work because she had not asked me just last week to speak on behalf for Women's Month on a nightly prayer line that she has. She's in the hospital. She doesn't care about what's going on, but Tam, you better be on this prayer line. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can do that for you. And so as I uh, dwell, uh, have dwelled into this scripture, into the entire chapter of John, um, I just became, uh, just so excited because knowing that I had someone close to me that's still doing the work of the Lord, regardless of what she's going through. She had slurred speech and we were on the call. She says, you guys probably don't like to hear how I sound. We're like, no, you have sound. You can talk. You can speak. You can think. He's giving you another chance. What is it in your life where um, you may be sick? Sometimes we get a cold and we can't do nothing. But look at God. Look at Christ. Jesus Christ is on that cross. And he was sitting there worried about his mama, who wants to take care of her, what we going to do, that relationship we have to have with Jesus Christ. So he's given us a calling, guys, city. <laughs> he's given us a calling. And so fix whatever relationships that you may need to repair. And just know that you have an assignment and a responsibility. Responsibility to God be all the glory. Thank you. All right, she took us down memory lane, hallelujah. Moving right along down memory lane.
Thank you, Tamara. Praise God. She left us with a few words that I wrote down. One was to trust. You got to trust the person to take care of you. You got to really trust them. Have a relationship with them. Jesus had a relationship with his father. And plus, it's your assignment. Everybody in here has an assignment. You get one every day when you wake up, it's an assignment. You don't have to look for it. It will find you. We're moving down memory lane. Hallelujah. And responsibility. So those were four great words to remind us. Hallelujah. Let's clap one more time. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's see what the fourth word is and how Deacon Ray Gray is going to take us on down memory lane. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Here we go. Here we go. It's on now. Let's all stand to our feet and give God praise. I want everyone standing up. Glory to his holy name. It's because of him we are here. That's why we're here, because of God Almighty. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, sir. To God be all the glory. First, giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my wife, who I love so much. Thank you for 37 years of marriage. Friday, Friday it will be 38. Uh, the 5th of April. Did I get it right? Amen. Amen. And don't worry, Jordan. I'm not going to ride. Ha, ha. Okay, I'm going to get this done. Okay. Uh, to Bishop and Pastor, thank you guys so much for allowing us to speak. Uh, we love you so much, Mary and I. You've been through so much. To the distinguished leaders, uh, you know, members and friends, Mary and I love you guys so much. Thanks for showing us so much love. To God be all the glory. The enduring mystery of Jesus Christ on the cross. Though he previously known only unbroken divine fellowship from eternity, Jesus experienced a horrible abandonment of his father as God poured out his wrath on his son as he bore the sins of the world on the cross. Did God forsake Jesus in that hour? Just exactly where was God? Eli, Eli. Leave my Sabbath tonight, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As you look at the cross, Christ then, it is not just a good man making a noble effort to sacrifice himself for the cause he believed in. It is the judgment of God. God is, is at work here, guys. God is judging sin. And just think, Jesus bore the sins of humanity on the cross. All our iniquities, all our transgressions. He took the sins of the world on the cross and felt abandoned. Jesus felt a separation from God, which made him feel as God abandoned him. Jesus felt a separation from the Father. He suffered the sins of the world. That's why Romans 4.25 says Christ delivered the death of our offenses. That's why 1 Corinthians 15 says Christ died for our sins. My God. That's why 1 Peter 2.24 says, who is his own bore our sins in his body on the tree. That's why 1 Peter 3.18 says Christ also suffered for our sins. Just for the unjust. That's why 1 John 4, 19 says he sent his son to be a torment for our sins. Galatians 3 also says, Galatians 3, 13 says he made, he was made a curse for us. My God. Certainly there was many passages in the Bible that tells us that explaining the significance of his death. These familiar words from the Old Testament, Isaiah 53. Surely our grief he himself bore, our sorrows he carried, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising for his well-being fell upon him. My God, my God. And by his scorning we are healed. 
My God, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused iniquity to fall on him. We understand what Isaiah is saying. He died in our place. Now, just think. Our sinful nature separate us from God. Even our best deeds fall short. That's Isaiah 64, 6. I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your fences like the morning mist. Oh, return to me, for I have paid the price and set you free. <laughs> to God be all the glory. My God, my God, my God. That's a, that's a reason to shout. I just feel like shouting. When they say, let us go into the house of the Lord, I just get happy. I, I, I get happy. Make me feel like rah ha ha Jordan. But I'm not going to do it. So to God be all the glory. Giving honor to God for this moment. Uh, I love you guys so much, Mary and I. Thank you for allowing me to share. Hallelujah, God. Did he not take us down memory lane? Hallelujah. You did a good work. You did your good homework. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? That's the word. God never forsake us. No matter what we do, he's promised he would always be with us. So we're traveling down memory lane over 2,000 years ago. So let's see what the next word is telling us about memory lane. We have our teen ambassador, hallelujah. <laughs> Layla Claw, hallelujah. She's going to take us down memory lane, hallelujah. Good afternoon, City of Praise family. I'm Teen Ambassador Layla Clark, and I'll be expounding upon the fifth, seven last word in John 19, 28, where Jesus said, I thirst to fulfill the scripture and prepare for his final shout before he dies. I want to share that when I received the email from Elder Wynn and it said you have five minutes to expound on the last word in scripture given, I did not know what I was going to say, and five minutes is a really long time, but... <laughs> God has been pushing me out of my comfort zone, so here I am. <laughs> okay, so the fifth seven last words are found in John 19, 28, and it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished and the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. The Amplified Version breaks it down like this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said in fulfillment of the scripture, I'm thirsty. Imagine Jesus hanging on the cross with nails piercing his hands and feet. I personally hate going to the doctor and getting my blood drawn because I have a low pain tolerance. So there is no way I can truly imagine what it was like for Jesus. My first point, and probably of greatest importance, is that Jesus' words, I thirst, remind us of his physical nature and his humanity. It also reminds us that Jesus died in the flesh for us and for our sins. I don't believe you can get the full revelation of Jesus's last words without acknowledging the immense pain that he endured for the endured to pay the price for our sin so that we could experience God's grace and mercy, the ultimate sacrifice and act of pure love. As Jesus is on the cross and he's being brutally abused, he knows he's about to give up his spirit. And although it's almost over, he says, I thirst. He could have said anything else or maybe nothing at all, but in his human form, he says, I thirst. My second point is, Jesus saying, I thirst, was to make sure that the scripture was fulfilled. In Isaiah 53, 12, Isaiah prophesied that Christ would die for our sin. The scripture says, he willingly poured out his life to death and was counted among the transgressors. Yet he himself bore and took away the sin of many and interceded with the father for the transgressors. This is a reminder to me and hopefully to you that Jesus is a promise keeper. No matter what it looks like, if God said it would happen, no matter how long you've been waiting, 
it will come to pass. Everything happens according to God's plan. So earlier this week, my mom and I were in Puerto Rico, and one thing I love to do is sunbathe. But on the last day before we came home, we went to the beach, and it was so, so hot to the point where it seemed like it was kind of dangerous to be outside. My skin literally started to feel like it was burning. After a while, it got to the point where it was just unbearable. So I grabbed my water bottle, and I tried to wet my feet so I could cool down. But before I could even open the cap, my mom looks at me, and she's like, I know you're not about to pour some good drinking water on your feet when the ocean is right there. <laughs> so, of course, I got up and got in the ocean, but it did get me thinking about what I was preparing for today. I needed to get into the ocean to refresh myself and feel the breeze from the waves to cool me down just enough so my skin would stop burn burning and I could stay on the beach a little longer. I wanted to finish getting what I came to get in Puerto Rico, which was a golden tan. Which leads to the third point, Jesus said, I thirst, to strengthen himself and ease his throat so that he might cry out his final words from the cross with a loud voice. Jesus, in his human form, was determined to complete his task. Knowing what it's like to be determined to complete a task is something I connect with in my life as a 16-year-old. I'm a sophomore and halfway through high school, and every day I get up and honestly find joy in knowing that I'm almost done. <laughs> School sometimes, many times feel like, feels like it's running me down. Every second there's a new assignment or assessment and the anxiety that the responsibility of school brings just continues to build up. But I keep pushing because just like Jesus, I have a task to complete so that I can soon say it is finished. Jesus's acknowledgement of his thirst to complete his task reminds me of the place that we all probably get to when we are trying to make sure that we follow the plan that God has laid out for us. Today, our thirst is quenched by God's presence in our lives. Psalm 63, 1 says, My flesh longs and sighs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. And later in verse 8, it says, Your right hand holds me up. I yearn for God when I'm thirsty, I long for his presence in times when it seems like I have a thousand thoughts running through my mind or when I just need to calm my racing heart. So on today, as we remember the fifth, seven last words of Jesus, I thirst. We should also remember that we should thirst for God in our daily lives so that we finish strong. And finally, I think it's comforting to know that we serve a God who understands what that thirst is like. Sometimes it can feel like no one understands, but God knows just what you're longing for and what you need to reach your finish line. Jesus acknowledges his human need when he says, I thirst. And daily we have to acknowledge our need for God to satisfy the dry places in our life. So thank you for your time. And remember, God gives you the supernatural ability to keep going even when it seems like you can't. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. <laughs> Oh, well, look at us. We continuing down memory lane. Later, she left a few words. And what I wrote down that stayed with me more than anything, she said, we need to thirst more for God. Do we thirst for him as much as we thirst for natural water? How do we thirst for him in the spiritual realm? So we need to thirst more for who he is, traveling down memory lane. She mentioned she was on vacation, and it was so hot in Puerto Rico. I'm going, I didn't get an invite, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. All right, let's continue down memory lane. The sixth word, it is finished, by Deacon Sabor Miller. Sabor Miller, it is finished. <laughs> Memory lane. <laughs> First, giving honor to God. And to, I'm nervous. <laughs> giving honor to God. 
to our bishop, our pastors, the overseers of this ministry, to the people's family, to the leadership, to my family, my husband, Peter, and my son, David and Daniel. Elder Peyton calls and said, hey, <laughs> I need you to do seven last words. I'm like, you sure you're not calling for Pete? <laughs> Then I get the email and it says, it is finished. I'm like, what am I going to say about it is finished in five minutes? And I think, let me ask Pete. But Pete is a history major. He digs deep. And I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get confused. And God was like, it's just me and you now. It's just me and you. So I thank God for giving me the word and the opportunity to break down the word. The scriptural reference for it, it is finished comes from John 19.30, which states it is finished, translated from Greek tetelestai, which is also means it is accomplished or complete. So when someone says it is finished, what does that mean, right? So it is finished, you could be, typically it means that when someone finishes a project or task, they've concluded it's complete. Or when you run a race, right, and you go across the finish line, you're finished. But when you think about it, after you run the race, many go back to training for another race. Then they finish that race, then another race, and they finish that race, right? Or when you're at work, you're assigned a project. And so in the project, when it's finished, you pretty much has delivered all of the deliverables. They're complete. You think about the plan, you execute, and you finish, and when you finish, you celebrate the completion. But there's this thing called the debrief, right? So in the debrief, you come back and you talk about what went well, what we could, could have done differently, what should we consider, right? And then we save those notes because when another task comes, we're like, we're going to go back and refer to those notes so we can enhance the next project, right? But when we finish something, sometimes we say we're finished but we don't necessarily accomplish the goal, right? Hmm. If you're running a race and you have a goal of achieving a certain time, you finish that race. But if you don't achieve that time, you do it again. You do it again. So now let's think about Jesus, right? When Jesus said, it is finished, what does that mean? In this case, we need to know his assignment. What was his end goal? So we go to John 4.34, and in the King James Version, it says, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will that sent me and to finish his work. In the NIV Version, it says, my food, says Jesus, is do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. The New Living Translation says, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Doing the will of God that sent me and finishing his work, right? But what Jesus is saying is, doing the will of the one who sent me and finishing the work is what sustains him. So when you think about food, it's something that you eat. It could be a piece of candy, it could be a piece of meat, something that you eat. But when you think about nourishment, nourishment is what sustains you, what keeps you, what keeps you going. And Jesus is saying, this is what keeps me going. When I'm here on earth, I know my goal. I know my end, my end goal and I'm focused, right? And so this is what sustains me. That's why it was easy for him to say when he was tempted by the devil, uh, he was able to withstand the temptation, in finishing the work and doing the will of God. So he was at all points tempted and yet without sin, finishing the work. When he was betrayed by Judas, it was so natural for him to say, whatever you need to do, do it quickly. Because he knew he needed to finish the work, do the will of God and finish the work. So then what is the work? In Matthew 5, 17, he says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. He came to fulfill the law. And in the Mosaic law, the penalty for sin was death. So here we go. God, in his infinite wisdom, he says, I am going to send my son 
who knew no sin to be a sacrifice for us, for me and for you, right? So with this sacrifice, all our sins, our debt canceled just by him sacrificing his life. For God sending his son, he defeated the fear of death. But what is unique about the words that Jesus, when Jesus says it is finished, it means that we no longer need to do the work again. And if you think about the race, we came back again. But with Jesus, we no longer have to do the work again. For Jesus, when he says it is finished, it's a triumphant call. It's a victory call that he makes on my behalf. It's a victory call that he makes on your behalf. He has completed the work and he has given us access to the Father. There is no debrief, there is no do-over, there is no additional training. It is finished. The power of the statement that Jesus makes solidifies that we never have to pay the price, we never have to pray the price. We know without a shadow of a doubt that we are free. It is a triumphal call because now I, I don't mill him out. I can come boldly to the throne of God. We have access. It is a triumphant call because when he calls our name, when we call on his name, he shows up. I wish I could sing that song that says, Jesus, the one who loved me is here to worship you. When I call, I know he loves me, he shows up. When I need a healer, when I call, he shows up. It is a triumphal call because we have access to the promises of God. They are yea and amen. It is a triumphant call because he lives, I live. It is finished. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. Did you not take us down memory lane? Good reminder. It is finished. He don't have to come back and do it a second time. It is finished. The victory call on our behalf. Memory lane. Let's give her another clap. She did her homework. She did her homework. It is finished. It is finished. What the book? Anybody else? Elder Payton? All kind of preachers preaching right now. We're going to have seven plus seven words. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> We are traveling down memory lane. So now we're down to the seventh word. My God, my God. It is finished. The seventh word, Minister Keith Moore. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. Take us on down memory lane. Well, come on, praise the Lord in here. Come on, y'all. We're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our master, ruler, and controller. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for God. Come on, give it up for him. Happy to be here today. Just, just like you guys, I got that call from Elder Peyton. And that, that call. <laughs> and and I, I with confidence said, absolutely. And when I hung up, I said, what did I just do? <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is amazing. We serve an amazing God, y'all. Um, if I can just paint a picture. Into your hands, I commend my soul. 
Jesus on the cross, nailed, arms, feet, blood flowing from his side, crown brow placed on his head, the pain, the suffering, yet he still loved even in pain, yet he still thought about others even in pain. Ah, I'm going to uh, read from Luke 23, 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened. And the veil was the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I've heard a lot of stories um, about what really happened. I heard the Roman soldiers killed him, and I heard he was tortured, and I heard uh, just a whole bunch of different things. But was he killed? Or did he give his spirit? Come on. Was he in control of that? Because the King of kings and the Lord of lords that we serve could have came up off that cross if he wanted to. But for us, he stayed on there and shed his blood. That same blood that washed our sins away. That same blood that heals us. That same blood that keep the evil away. That same blood. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. The Bible says something specific. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Then it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, I'm so grateful to God for life. You know, uh, he gave his life so that we may have life. So that we may have, so that we may be able to stand up against the wiles of the devil. He said that we can trust him, y'all. If God said, he said, trust in the Lord. He don't say if or maybe. He says, trust in the Lord. That's the word, y'all. Come on, give God some praise. There was a, a short time ago that I was going through some health issues. And um, as a matter of fact, as, as of right now, I'm being healed. I'm being healed. If I sound a little weird, if I sound a little weird, I'm being healed as we speak. But that same blood that flowed from his side, that same blood that washed our sins away is healing. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. I'm just so grateful to God um, because this life that we live, y'all, God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. It's so amazing that we can depend on God like that. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said he'll be with us always until the end of the earth. So I'll end with this. God, we trust you. God, we stand on your word. God, we give you all praise, honor, and glory. And God, we thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. To you, Father, be all the praise, be all the honor, and be all the glory. Thank you. Oh, glory.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The last word. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Minister Keith took a stand memory lane. One, two, three. And the words that I wrote down that he said that stood out to me, that we trust God and to continue standing on his word. And then he shared his testimony. He said he's still in the process of being healed. He's still in the process of being healed because he know why. Because by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Not was, but already healed. Okay, let's clap right there. <laughs> this has truly been a great moment going down memory lane. And the Lord is just reminding us over 2,000 years ago what he did. And sometimes he had to take us back to bring us forward because we forget what he already done. He's not coming back doing it over. He said, it's finished. It's finished. He commend his spirit. No man take his my life. I can lay it down, pick it. What a mighty God. Who would serve a God like that? No man take his my life. No man. I lay it down. I can pick it up. You all are commend yourselves. You've done a great job. Okay, everybody stand, hallelujah. We ain't with them, memory lane, hallelujah. If I did a quiz and start calling them, folks, y'all would have so much to say about memory lane. But all I want you to remember that each one of you that pressed your way to come out, God has already done whatever you was asking him to do. He already done it. He already done it. We're going to have a communion, and before we have communion, we need to ask some of ourselves, everybody that's in here knows if they did this, they know where they'll spend eternity. Raise your hand quickly, please. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. What a mighty God we serve. Hands down. Everybody saved in the house. Glory to God. Okay, elders, Elder Bobby. Communion, communion, we need four people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. God is a good God all the time. The seven last words from the cross. It's always an invigorating time to be remembered. Amen. When we take that walk down memory lane, held to Bessie. Amen. Amen. Just like his blood, it just keeps on working. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Let us let a man examine himself. If you would repeat after me, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, if you would intercede on behalf of your neighbor. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you with thanksgiving and praise. I thank you that you bless each and every one of brothers and sisters that are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Minister Will, if you would pray, changing this bread and this wine from a physical use to a spiritual one. Thank you. 
most good grace as well. We just thank you for thank you, the nerves poured by. We ask that you change it from a physical use to a spiritual use. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So there now serve. You may now serve communion. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. Have there been any omissions? Just raise your hand if you've been omitted. Elder Payton, you may be seated. It's, it's in your hands table. Okay. Just take the Holy Communion and place it in your hand as we pray over the bread. As I partake of this Holy Communion, as I partake of this Holy Communion, when chewing upon this bread, when chewing upon this bread, my heart, my heart, my soul, my soul, and my body, and my body, are brought into remembrance, are brought into remembrance of the price paid for me, of the price paid for me at Calvary, at Calvary, by Jesus Christ, by my Jesus Lord. Christ, my Lord. I hereby now receive the finished work. I hereby now receive the finished work of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. Taking of this bread. The taking of this bread confirms in me. Confirms in me that Jesus Christ, my Lord. That Jesus Christ, my Lord. Took all of my weaknesses. Took all my weaknesses. Sicknesses. Sicknesses. And diseases. And diseases. On the cross. On the cross. By whose stripes? By whose stripes? I am healed. Forevermore. Forevermore. Glory to God. Glory to God. For his goodness to me. For his goodness to me. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. My Lord. My Lord. Amen. Amen. You may consume the bread. Praise the Lord. Let us take the wine and place it in our hands. Repeat after me as I partake as I of, this communion, of this holy communion. The drinking of this wine, the of, this wine of, the vine, of the vine confirms in me confirms that, in I that I am linked to the major vine, the major vine who, is who is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. My Lord. My Lord. This, wine this wine symbolizes his shed blood, his shed blood at, Calvary at Calvary on my behalf, on my behalf which purged me purge from, all my sins from all my sins and presents me, and presents me righteous, righteous before, the before the throne of the Creator God, the Creator God who cannot look on sin. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God for the finished work at Calvary through Jesus Christ. My Lord. Amen. You may drink the wine. And when they sang a hymn, they went unto the Mount of Olives. Let us also do likewise. Amen. Amen. If you would just prepare your offering and um, you may just bring it up. Amen. Let us prepare our offering. You can leave it there. You can leave it there if you want. It's fine. 
Father God, in the name of Lord Jesus, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts. We thank you, Father God, for this day, these seven last words, Father God. We pray, Father, that you would bless and that you would use this offering that is being given for the upbuilding of your temple and your kingdom. We pray, Father God, that you would give them many fold, 100 fold in return for all that they've given. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We would be remiss, amen, if we did not once again thank each and every minister who ministered to us today. Give them a hand clap. Amen. Amen. I tell you, they did a fantastic job. Amen. They realized their assignment up here. They willingly accepted that assignment and they did a wonderful job. There was a word. You see, you always have to remember when you get up to minister God's word, that's God's word. When he sends his word out, it accomplishes what he sends it to do. So do not let the enemy come in and get any victory on this day because God had you here on assignment and he placed within you when you rolled off his assembly line exactly what you were going to need for today. And so somebody here, and, and not only that, watch this, and we're going to get out of here, but watch this. You were sent out on the internet. So you're reaching thousands of people, amen? So that word that he gave you is out there. And each and every one of you, I want you to know on behalf of our bishop and our pastor, we are so, so very proud of what you're doing and how you're allowing the Lord to use you in his work. God bless you. If you're ready to depart, you can stand. Amen. You can still continue to come. Amen. 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 I love you, Lord. Amen. Oh, you know. We only see what see what's happening. I uh, know you can see us. Can you all hear us yet? How I have no way of finding out. No way. We, we don't know if you're hearing us or not. Uh, let's see. Somebody send me a text message. They can send it to me. Send it to co-pastor. Let us know if y'all can hear us. No. Check out the page and see if they can see us. Okay. Tell them to let us know. Sure. They might be hearing all of us now. <laughs> it's so happy resurrection season. Great, great, great day to see you on Good Friday. They recognize Jordan. So you can't hear us? You can log in now. I can't hear you. Let's can see. see us? Can you can all you hear us? Let us know when you can hear us. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Okay. You, all, you all can feel free to text co-pastor if you can hear us. So oh, they can hear us. I, I see a yes coming up on your phone. Oh, he said they can see us. We can see, just can't hear. Can't hear. So let's try this button one more time. No, that's better. There we go. There. Let us know when you can hear us. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Everyone can see. It says everyone can see and hear you. Yeah, I think so you guys on, something on, that end. on your part. Let them know it's on their end. Tell them ours is on.
Hello, can you all hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? There you go. Let us know if you can hear us. Can't hear us. All right, I'll take them off. Let's try. Okay, let's try this. Oh, hold on, Elder Payton. Don't hang up. Okay, he's going to put the microphone up to it. Okay. He said give him two seconds. Well, we just... I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Now, depending, are you ready? Okay, they're ready, Dad. Oh, Can, maybe he was going to yeah. hold on. Yeah, I think you. Silly me. Hold on, I think we were going to hear this way. Okay. Okay, Elder Payton. Hello. Okay, we're ready. I'm sorry. Okay, they can hear us now, Bishop. Okay, family, let's see. Can, can you all hear us well? Hey, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, no. Grace to everybody. God bless you all. It is, listen, hey, listen, we miss y'all. <laughs> we miss y'all so very much. Uh, happy resurrection season, Sunday. right? Yes. And uh, God bless you. This is Good Friday. Listen, let me make Good Friday as deep as you can imagine. Here's what it is. When he got up, we got up. <laughs> and so whatever you've been down from, Whatever you've been down from, there's a grace to get up on today. I always think that Good Friday is like indicative of whatever knocked us down. This is the season that proves that nobody can keep a child of God down. So grace to everybody. Peace to everybody. God love you. We appreciate y'all. We will be flying in. So we'll be with you on Sunday. Right, Cobasa? Exactly. Exactly. We will be in. They got to speak to your phone. Oh, I, so we just want to say congratulations to everyone that spoke so well. We're so they can hear me. They can hear me. Ben. We we are, we congratulate every speaker who did a phenomenal job. Um, some of them just flew in to make sure they were there. They were out with us in Florida. So shout out to everyone that is speaking. And listen, don't let this just be another resurrection season. Don't let this just be another resurrection season. But may we do things even better in the eyes of God, that he will find us worthy to give us continued favor in the name of Lord Jesus. So listen, we love you. I I'm so excited. Listen, y'all. Listen, I'm excited about the play tonight. It's going to be absolutely dynamic. I've been talking to Minister Mark. Listen, the play tonight is going to be phenomenal. Grab everybody you know. It's tonight and, tomorrow. and it's tomorrow. I'll be there Ga tomorrow. Gas up your pacers. Bring your crew. It's going to be a phenomenal time. So everybody, tell everybody, come and see the Easter Resurrection play. It's going to be phenomenal. We will be there on Sunday. <laughs> and Sunday, I got, I, got a, I got an incredible word. I'm really excited about Sunday. I really, really am. Uh, but I'm going to drop it on you on Sunday. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, let, let, you know what? Should I tell them what the title is? Sure, Sunday? sure. We, we're going to talk about the resurrection. And the theme of Sunday, if you really want to know, is somebody got to be lying. God, awesome. One group said it didn't happen. One, One group, group said it did happen. We're going to show you what really happened because somebody got to be lying. So we're going to be talking about that Sunday. And uh, it's going to be incredible. I love you. Thank you for your patience, City. Yeah. As you know, co and, and I, your support. and your support, we've been on this incredible assignment. So it does pull us away a little bit. But thank you. Thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for being strong. Thank you for being leaders, for loving each other, loving God's people. We are so grateful to all the speakers today. You confirmed something in my spirit that I knew. I knew it. Let me tell you what I know about today. Today confirmed the co-pastor and I can take off a few more days because we got some incredible preachers in the house. So thank you all so much. Grace to everyone. We love you. 
We will see you Sunday morning, and it's going to be off the chain, y'all. Bring your real worship, because it's going to be powerful in the camp. Love you. Adios. God bless you.